In this video, I'm going to show you a secret method for coloring a live caricature that I learned when I was working at Disney World. At Disney World, we used watercolor to color our caricatures, but I worked with this experienced artist and he was one of the fastest artists in the entire park. And he showed me his method, which was a hybrid method using part markers and part watercolor that increased his speed and actually was a very cool look. And that's what I wanna show you in this video. Okay, these are the materials you're gonna need for this. First off, the paper. This is a hundred pound cardstock. You're gonna need something really sturdy. See how that's got some heft to it. It's got to be sturdy because it's got to be able to take the watercolor. You're gonna be putting water on this and it will bubble and, and go crazy if it's too thin. I would go at least with a hundred pound cardstock or even heavier, can't hurt. Next, you're gonna need an alcohol-based marker. I normally use the Tombow for my drawings, but that's not gonna work on a watercolor drawing because Tombow can smear. I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely gonna smear because this is water-based ink. So when I put watercolor on it, it's gonna smear all over the place. But these markers are alcohol-based ink. So I'm gonna use this one. It's kind of new to me, Pigma Sakura or Sakura Pigma markers. I just ordered some more and I'll put a link in the description. At Disney World, a lot of artists use these chart packs. I'm not a big fan of these chart packs, but the ink is made out of alcohol and it's not gonna smear when you put watercolor on it. And I will give you the rest of the materials that I'm gonna use or that you need to do this as I use them. But right now I am using the Zebra marker. It's a really great marker and hopefully it doesn't smear when we put the watercolor on this. I don't think it will, but we are going to find out. I guess we're, we're all going to be in suspense. I'm going to try to ink this in really fast, but basically what I did was to get a caricature, I just stretched out his forehead and stretched out his nose, and then that kind of forced me to shrink his chin and lip area of his face. And hopefully it looks like him. If not, then anyway, it's just a drawing I created to show you guys how to do this coloring method. And also, to be honest with you, I have an event coming up this weekend in which I'm going to be doing color caricatures. And I haven't practiced using watercolor on full-size caricatures like this in years. And so this is kind of like my practice, and I'm recording it. Another thing I notice about Benjamin Franklin, he has his huge eyelids. So I try to exaggerate that a little bit. I mean, I could have gone much, much bigger with that. And then in this photo or drawing of him, this eyebrow is, I kind of think of it as like a snail crawling down the side of his head, whereas this eyebrow is popped up. Like, he's looking at you like, what? With an attitude, you know? I wonder what kind of attitude he would have. His attitude might be like, so you're on the $5 bill, huh? Well, I'm on the $100 bill. You know, something like that. And on this sketch, I have to put his glasses. On another, some of the other paintings of him, he's wearing his, his round, they're probably reading glasses. And those look so cool and add a lot of character, so. Gotta add them in there. I'll try to get this done quick so we can get on to the coloring part. I 
Okay, so now I'm gonna get out that Pigma marker I was showing you. This is definitely alcohol-based ink, so it's not gonna smear. Look, I'm trying to make these outside lines thicker. When I'm doing the, like this, I like to go boom, boom, like this. And not, I don't even pick up my pen, pick up my marker from the page, just draw it. Just a long, smooth line like that. The next thing you're gonna need for this method is a flesh-toned marker, alcohol-based marker. Uh, this is what I used to use, Prismacolor markers. This one's all dried up, but this one is the color of sand. But now I'm using this Ohuhu marker, which I really like. I bought a whole set of these Ohuhu markers. They're flesh tones, so they're for all shades of flesh or skin and um, it doesn't matter what marker you use it doesn't have to be my exact marker but it's just got to be color of flesh the shadows actually and it's got to be alcohol based so it doesn't smear so the key to making this work is I'm only going to color in the shadows. I'm kind of make, hope I don't mess this up, but I'm kind of making it up as I go. So I used to work with, I worked at Animal Kingdom, and um, sometimes there was three artists there, and one of the artists was Jeff Carrier. He was one of the fastest and best artists in the whole park. Now, a lot, just about every artist used watercolor, but he used this hybrid method where he would put down a marker like this in the shaded areas. And he would go over it with watercolor. That way he doesn't have to do a second pass with the watercolor. He can be real fast and he's already got the shadows on there. Now I'm doing a little extra, but if you ever look at uh, cartoons, anime, old cartoons, they have a flat color. Then they have like one layer of shadow. And so, bada boom, bada bing. That's all the that's all the shadow I'm gonna put on there. But because we're doing a video and I can't help myself, I'm gonna add some uh, shadow for his hair too. So, hopefully, I don't mess this up. But if I do, oh well. And how somebody might ask, how do you know what areas to shat? to shadow, to put the shadow, to shade it. That's easy, I just look at the photo. I can see there's a shadow up here in this little, um, it's like an alcove where his eyebrow is, above his eyebrow, and again on this side. And then of course, underneath the nose, the light's coming from this area, so th there's shadow here. And um, you could go on and on and add all kinds of layers of shade and shadow, but you just want to get it basic. Okay, the next thing you need is watercolor paints and a brush. So I've got this cool palette that I used to use at Disney World. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get one of these. But <clears throat> any type of watercolor will do. I put watercolor in this one and a flat brush like this. Next, you need water. <laughs> Here I got a coffee cup, but you can use anything water and a sponge to uh, to dip off some of the extra moisture from the brush. Before I color this in, I want to do something fun. I mean, he's got these glasses, so 
I'm going to color them in with markers. I left a couple of highlights. Hopefully that doesn't mess the whole thing up. But I think it's kind of cool. So let's see what happens. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've dipped a little water on my brush. I'm putting, mixing it with the watercolor paints. Got me a little pool of skin color on there. And now I'm just going to paint this guy. And the, the thing about this method is it's, it's fast because... I don't have to blend in shadows. I've already put the shadows on there, so now if I do this right, I'm just gonna put flat color on everything. I don't wanna get it on his eyes. Obviously, I didn't mix up enough paint. Because, let's see how we go. So far, so good. I'm not trying to be fast. But look how quick that was. I had the shadows on there already. And it took no time to fill the rest. And it kind of looks cartoony. So now we got to mix up some brown. His hair is like a dark brown. So let's mix that up. Got a, uh, let's mix up more of it this time. So that brown's not brown enough, so I'm adding some black to it. Now we're getting some dark brown. And that's how you do paint. You just mix, mix stuff together until it starts looking right. And that's still not dark enough either. Let's put some more black on that thing. Okay. And I put in some of the shadows already, so we're just going to do flat color. Uh, Got to mix up some more paint. That's the thing is the more you do this, the, the quicker you get because you know you'll have an instinct about how much paint to mix up. Well, since I haven't done it in years, obviously I haven't mixed up enough paint. And it's never going to be perfect, so we can always go over it again, add a little more color. Then for contrast, I'm going to try to get some, like some blue, maybe a bluish green for his uh, shirt. We'll leave his collar white. That's it. That is the, the watercolor and marker method. I think it looks pretty cool. And it takes a few minutes to dry out. If you can see, excuse me, oh, it's bubbling a tiny bit. That's what I'm saying, the thicker the paper, the better. But it's not bubbling so much that it's gonna ruin the drawing. And once this dries, <clears throat> the paper will lay flat again. But that is a quick method for coloring a caricature live. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That will cause the al algorithm to push it out so more artists see it, which is always a cool thing. And I am going to try to put links to all of the resources and materials that I used in this video in the description of the video and so if you're curious about the markers that I used or the paint the links to all that stuff is going to be in the description of the video 
And of course, if you're interested in my courses or a Patreon, a links for that's going to be in the video too. And have fun drawing, and I will see you, or you'll see me on the next video. I might see you too, because I might draw you. Okay, see you on the next one. Hey, one more thing I just wanted to show you guys, and this is my drawing, but this is my practice drawing that I did before I started the video. And believe it or not, I think that this one is three times better than the one I videoed. It looks like the features of this are, are better, and for some reason, these, the feature area, I pushed it to the right and down too much. And believe it or not, I like my practice drawing much better. But that just goes to show that I am on this journey also, and I'm going to keep practicing and learning, and I don't always get better every day. Sometimes there's a little back and forth. So hopefully that will encourage you that we're all on the journey together, and I'm going to keep practicing, and I hope you do too.